I can move the slides. Ah, oh, move around. Yeah, yeah, I mean, move. Yes, closer. But they, okay, I, I have a quite good voice. That's uh, we need to use the mic though. Yes. Broadcast it. So shall I introduce? Ah, uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> So it's two o'clock. Welcome everybody. We got some more participants in person coming in, but out of respect to people connecting online, specifically at this time, to hear about gender inequity and online learning, a case for gender responsive pedagogy, we got Joanna Wild, uh, who is uh, presenting uh, work that she's done with and um, submitted to old uh, with uh, John Howe. And uh, without further ado, uh, I'll let uh, Joanna um, present. I will uh, issue a reminder when you've got 10 minutes left, uh, just so you are aware. And um, so we have sufficient time to get interaction. Okay, so thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for, for coming uh, and, and for such great numbers. Uh, I'm Joanna Wild. I have a dual role. I work at INASP, which is International Network for Advancing Science and Policy. Uh, and I'm an independent consultant, founded my own company, Online Learning for All. And uh, I've, um, I'm going to present something and we're going to have a workshop. It's a workshop session uh, around gender uh, responsive pedagogy. And uh, that was prepared together with my Skovgard, who couldn't come here today. So I'll be uh, by myself running the workshop. Um, so what are we going to do? I'm going to present the gender responsive pedagogy framework. Uh, it will take me about 10 minutes. Then I'm hoping to take some questions from you um, and clarifications. And uh, then we're going to have group work. So um, we're going to try and apply a checklist uh, that is derived from this gender responsive pedagogy pe framework to a sample course. And then we're going to have a plenary in which uh, we're going to just share observations from this group work. So uh, where did the approach come from? Um, uh, we um, get, developed the approach in a, in a project called uh, Transforming Employability for Social Change in East Africa. And it was a project funded by FCDO uh, between 2018 and 2021. Uh, the aims were basically to work with four universities, uh, two in Uganda and two in Tanzania, to uh, encourage uh, incorporation of critical thinking, problem solving and gender responsive pedagogy within the curricula. And we worked very closely in a partnership with faculties and uh, social entrepreneurs, uh, employers, students. As you can see, one part of this work was around gender responsive pedagogy, and this is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, and uh, from that work, we were aiming to develop a model that and tools that could be then scaled up across, especially East Africa to start with, uh, and then in other uh, countries in Africa. Um, so what, how was gender responsive pedagogy designed, uh, de defined in this project? Uh, firstly, the learning needs of men and women learners are addressed in teaching and learning processes inside and outside of the classroom. And secondly, teaching staff are gender aware and gender responsive in, in their planning and facilitation of courses, and are continuously reflecting and adapting. Um, so as I mentioned, we wanted to develop a model, something that would be scalable. So we ended up by developing a framework uh, and a gender mainstreaming in higher education toolkit. Uh, and this is something that we then later on went on to adapt for online learning. I'm not going to go into the results of, of this project because we had a whole monitoring and evaluation uh, pillar. And uh, what I wanted to say, and you can go to slides on the Google Docs if you are interested in some details, is that it has proved to work. So we've had seen positive impact both on lecturers and students in terms of the gender responsiveness. Uh, why I'm saying that, because that encouraged us basically to think, uh, as, as you can see also the project was running, it's a kind of final year was running already during the COVID times, that encouraged us to uh, think about how we can actually use the systematic approach into what we do online. What I forgot to mention is that, uh, that ENAF is basically working with uh, early career researchers, 
uh, in uh, the global south. And we do that through um, basically both a face to face capacity development approaches and a lot of online approaches that range from uh, self study courses to facilitated courses to uh, big MOOCs. So uh, before we went into adaptation of this uh, framework, we were gender aware, we always had this gender lens, but it wasn't uh, used in a very systematic way when we were designing uh, our courses or training our facilitators. It was um, not uh, something that uh, would be like a framework and particular approach that we would use. We systematically collected data on gender since 2010 but we had limited resources and time capacity to do the analysis. So we were accumulating this data, doing some analysis, but we didn't have much time. And then 2020, COVID happened, and we started having a lot of queries from our partners from the Global South into, okay, we have to go online, how we do it, you've been doing this with us, can you help us? So then we went on and spent time on actually consolidating that learning and uh, on conducting a meta-analysis of all the data that we had since 2010, looking at various aspects, and gender was one of them, equity was one of them. Uh, so we went on and published a book, uh, and if you are interested, there is a QR code on your table where you can scan, the, scan it. It's an open access book uh, published with African Minds in January 2023, so very fresh off the press, where you have more details about it. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to give you some some insight into into some of our findings uh, around gender. Uh, so women learners uh, are only slightly represented on our courses. Usually there are four in ten learners, sometimes half, sometimes more than a half. It depends on the particular topic. Uh, they tend to complete, they have slightly higher completion rates, uh, interestingly, than men. Uh, and why I say interestingly, because uh, they seem to face many more challenges and many more disruptions to learning. And still, they have slightly marginally, but higher completion rates. Um, they tend to uh, access uh, our courses more through mobile phones than men do. Uh, and they start with lower confidence levels, uh, but they uh, finish our courses with slightly higher reported confidence levels than men do. They tend to be timid initially on the discussion forums, uh, also related to confidence and finding your own voice in the online spaces. Uh, and uh, they tend to like our quizzes. So they are much more engaged through quizzes that, for instance, men are. So these are some, some, some of the findings. And then we realized how many gender gaps we have, how many things we just don't understand that we would like to be able to understand. And, and therefore, we've developed a more systematic approach to collection of data and disaggregating of data by gender. Uh, and we committed to a deeper analysis uh, going forward. And, um, so in terms of the systematic approach to, to gender, um, we have uh, set off to look at the framework we had developed for a face-to-face -face context, for the context of a higher education classroom in Uganda and Tanzania, and, and, and seeing you know, what are the similarities, what we can take for online learning. Um, so the aim was to support designers and facilitators to integrate gender responsive pedagogy into the design and facilitation of online events and courses. And the process was basically in-house review. So we created our own team uh, where we looked at the framework, we started adapting it, we tested it internally, and then we commissioned an external review with a, um, with a gender expert from Kenya. And now I'm using the opportunity uh, to be here at ALT to kind of test it with the, with the ALT uh, community and see what you think about it. Um, and this is, this is why we're having this workshop. So you're going to be able to try it out and then uh, provide your feedback, uh, give us your ideas about it. So we've developed uh, three types of resources. One is a framework for gender responsive pedagogy on an online learning. Uh, second is a matrix with steps for learning designers um, and for facilitators uh, that they can take to make their courses more gender responsive. So it's very pra practical. And uh, finally, a minimum checklist. So that, that's kind of something more kind of handy to, to support the design process, but also uh, the review of the courses. So you can use it, you should use it basically when you design the courses, but you can also use it to kind of review particular courses and say, 
uh, okay, are they, are they gender responsive uh, or not? So very briefly about the framework. Um, so the framework consists of seven teaching and learning spaces. Um, and these are those orange boxes in the outer circle uh, and six dimensions of gender, which are the green uh, boxes in the inner circle. Um, and now the idea is that you can take any of the teaching and learning spaces, so the orange boxes, and then you can think through the six dimensions of gender uh, and think how they interrelate and how does this dimension of gender plays out in this particular space. So I'm going to give you an example. If we take teaching and learning materials uh, and representation, then you are going to think about and, and look at your course, um, are, men, are both men and women students represented in your core mater course materials? And if uh, they both represent it, what is the percentage? What is the ratio? Um, that links very closely with equality and equity. Uh, okay, they are represented, but how they are represented and what kind of roles they are represented and how can you promote greater gender equality and equity through those materials. If we move to stereotypes, so you basically look, okay, do we have uh, any stereotypes in those uh, teaching and learning materials? And if you do, then it doesn't necessarily mean you have to throw away this teaching and learning material. It basically means that uh, you might want to have an active discussion with your students about uh, the stereotypes and, and kind of make them more aware, make, make them more gender sensitive, and why they're occurring. So have those gendered conversations in your classroom. Um, similarly with, with bias, uh, is there any bias in your materials? And if there is, what is the impact of that on your learners? What might be the impact? Uh, how might it impact on how they think about themselves and whether they, inter they might internalize some of the bias? And again, uh, you can just have uh, informed conversations with your students about it. You don't necessarily have to discard those materials. Um, uh, going into teaching, uh, the, into interaction and space. Uh, before you develop your teaching and learning materials, what do you know about your men and women learners uh, in terms of their needs and how to set up the learning space? Are there particular um, configurations that will be more uh, helpful for them? For instance, we've learned that uh, mobile phones uh, are greatly used by women. So now we are more aware of setting the spaces uh, in Moodle app, uh, mobile app, rather than designing only in the, in the platform. Um, and finally, power and empowerment. So the question here is, you know, what kind of roles are, uh, are being portrayed in your teaching and learning? Matthias, do you try to empower uh, both genders in terms of... Uh, you, even going against some stereotypes um, and, for instance, your discipline. Um, so that's the framework. And um, I'm going to pause here and see if there are questions, what kind of questions you have. I'm going to be strict here. I'm going to try to do five minutes only uh, because I would like you to really get heads on with the framework and try it out. Um, and we only have an hour, not even anymore. No questions. That's great. I mean, there will be plenty, I'm sure, when we start uh, actually working with this. So um, we need to organize ourselves in, in groups, um, if that's OK. And I have actually um, tables on which I have, I have some handouts. Uh, so can we please try to, I don't know, how many are we? Uh, three, four, five, six. 20, 25, okay, excellent, that's perfect, because I have five tables, and there will be like four people in each table, and please try to, when you try to come, so the tables, they have handouts, is this one, the first one, the second, the one at the back, and, and the one here, right, those tables don't, oh, and this one here, excellent, so if people who are sitting at the other tables can place themselves, but please be gender sensitive. So let's try to have mixed groups also at those tables. Okay, so have a look around. I don't think we have quite about the gender composition and try to be create mixed groups.
Joanna, while people are organizing themselves, I wonder if there is anything like this in the online for the online participants to look at. Is this in Google Docs? No. Okay. I mean, I I have um, I have it online in terms of the um, the activity. The problem is that I had a QR code on the last slide, and it's still not my latest slide, so I right. don't think it's displaying. So yeah, so I was not just sure. thinking about the online participants, yeah. how would they engage? So the online part participants have also access to the Google Docs, right? Yeah. So in the Google Docs, online, yeah. there should be the latest presentation, and in the latest presentation, also there, there is the checklist. But I'm not sure whether I can organize now both. No, I, uh, I just give a verbal instructions for them to follow, and then obviously they won't be able to see what's happening at each table, or as long as they can engage somehow. Okay. So if the online participants go to a uh, slide number just a moment in the google doc material um to slide number 13 group work uh, and you can do it individually totally uh, and i number 14 uh, you can uh, create an account in our model space and then you can go into the course that i've there is a qr code that you can see as well at the moment and uh, you click on the qr code it leads you to a kind of sample course that you can review uh, now in this presentation, in this presentation, I can't see it at the moment, but in the Google Doc for the conference, you will see the latest version of the presentation. And there is another slide uh, instead of slide 15, which has two QR codes. And that is a QR code to the checklist. So you can use the checklist to assess this course against gender responsive uh, criteria. And you have access to the guidance. But unfortunately, my slide is not displaying and I can't take you there. So I hope that um, you are able to... Online yeah, can, uh, they, that you can basically go to the to the folder on the Google Docs and create the presentation, and they shall be there. Thank you very much. So I'll let you roam. <laughs> Thank you. If you want to leave the mic for that, if you want to just interact with your tables. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay thank you thank you so much for organizing yourselves now um very briefly introduction to to, to the group work so in your group uh you can choose choose a course or module that you want to review so i know some of you will just have access to your own courses your own modules so you can have a look at them right um, and if you don't have, I mean, you can access them via your smartphone or laptop. If you don't, just work in a group, uh, uh, just work with your colleague who might have access. Yes. Yeah? So you have, you, you have to kind of decide what you're working on. If not, you can work on the sample one, uh, and I will give you the details in the next slide. And the sample one is from our courses, it's a self-study tutorial that we are revising at the moment. And uh, you can access it, I'll give you the details, and then you can review this one. Um, I mean, there, there are benefits to, to, to choosing one or the other. If you choose yours, you can basically apply it, it's relevant to what you're doing currently, and, and you know the course. If you do the second, I'm gonna provide you with the sample review at the end. Uh, uh, so you can kind of see uh, what a gender expert said when doing the, the review of that course about that particular module. So I, I will let you choose. So what, that's one thing you have to do per group. Um, and you review uh, this module focusing on four teaching and learning spaces, uh, because these will be the only option uh, here. Uh, teaching and learning materials, methods and activities, assessment and language. Um, so on your tables, you will find the checklist that you use and you basically provide the marking and your notes and you can uh, find guidance, uh, which is a kind of bigger document. Uh, that's basically for you to scan, to just get an idea of what the learning designers and facilitators can do in, 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 in those spaces. So um, when, you, when you work on it, I would like you to use the um, cards yellow and pink to basically provide recommendations to improve the particular course or module uh, 
you are reviewing. So when you review it uh, with the checklist, write down recommendations. How would you see this course module being improved? And uh, maybe you can use yellow cards for that. And then a second task is for you to think about the checklist. Do you have any questions? What kind of, how, how, how was the process for you? What works well, what doesn't, what recommendations for improvements would you give us in terms of the checklist and the process? Uh, is that more or less clear? I know it, it's a lot for an hour, <laughs> but I'm hoping you're gonna at least get the idea of how this framework works. Um, and I'll be walking around. Uh, and you know, if you have any questions, queries, please ask me and I'll be there to help. So what time is it now? We got 221. 221. Okay, so we have half an hour roughly for that. And then we're gonna just go into the plenary and each table, uh, I would like to ask to share some insights from that process. Is that okay? Uh, and if you uh, kind of decide who is going to report back, uh, let's try to be again kind of thinking about the, the, the gender uh, aspects of it. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your amazing work and vivid conversations. <laughs> We're going to try to go back to plenary so that we can share some of those insights, that you can share some of those. So we have literally like two minutes per group. And uh, basically, I would like to ask you to, to share your insights about, you know, first of all, what kind of improvements would you uh, recommend for the course designers? And second, about the process itself. How did you find it? And what would you improve about the framework, about the, the checklist and the guidance? I know it, it, it was a lot in a very short time, um, but I'm hoping that you anyway enjoyed the kind of experience of, of doing this kind of gender audit. So I'm going to start with table on the left. Why not? Can I, I please ask someone? Um, am I doing that right? Uh, so um, we looked at the, the plagiarism course, the sample course. Um, we thought for improvements, it, it didn't really address many gender dimensions really in, in plagiarism. So we thought that could actually be an area that it could improve on. And we thought perhaps for the, the video resources where things were more visual, there could be a more gender diverse cast. Um, in that instance, there was, I think, one video and it did actually have two female people in it. But look, thinking sort of more generally, perhaps there could be multiple options or just for more visual resources that could be more important. And um, I mean, generally, we, we thought the, the checklist was really great and we certainly thought uh, particularly on that first point about uh, looking at gender dimension at all for this kind of topic probably wasn't something we, that would have occurred to us mm. that that was missing till the checklist, you know, asked us to look for it. Um, we did think just for a couple of them, it was kind of hard to uh, ascertain on the choices if it was to some extent or to a large extent where it was things like looking for representation. So where we were thinking we're looking for something to be 50-50 Hmm. Does that mean a large extent is where it's equal or maybe that would be context dependent again, if it was mm -hmm. something that maybe should be imbalanced? Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Um, can I go to the second table at the back, please? Mike is coming. <laughs> Excuse me, let me just find something on you. Or maybe it will run, don't worry. <laughs> I know that this group reviewed a different course. I, I think the only one. Um, yeah, we uh, reviewed my course that I just I just started working here, and they were like, "You're going to teach uh, teach this in three months." So it was useful to look over it because there's a lot to improve. I thought, um, and generally we found the process a bit hard because there's so much in the course and there's so little time to go over it. Um, but the checklist I think was quite clear and helpful in stimulating some different questions. And what we would improve in the course is that. It's always been taught by women, and now another woman is going to be teaching in it. And uh, it might mm. be good to have a bit more variety in that, also in the videos. Um, and it would be good to reflect on maybe uh, gender and other demographics in uh, in the technology. So the course is about um, critical considerations of use of technology, and we could easily include a gender dimension in this. There's a lot of ethical considerations and stuff like that, but not so much 
are more women using this technology or more men? Uh, for example, the mobile phone uh, use that you mentioned yeah. before, that could be really useful to just make them consider as well. Um, and some, some things that we took out of the checklist was the procedures for uh, how to engage in the course, things like that, for using the technology. Those are, they, they all exist, but they're not necessarily integrated with the course. Mm -hmm. So that would be really useful to make it even more accessible. Um, and I found out I didn't get the briefing on gender bias myself, uh, which I should have had. So it's a good reminder mm. to get that done. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. It's very uh, fantastic feedback. And I'm going to go over to this table and I'm going to ask you to speak now. What's your name? <laughs> Please go ahead. Just trying to be gender balanced. So I know we have <laughs> less men than women in that session. So I'm trying to give voices to both. Okay. Um, so yeah, very similar to the first table in terms of our, our general reflections. Uh, but we can add a, add a couple more points. Uh, yeah. So um, the resource in general were, were, was good. Uh, we noticed that there were a couple of points, particularly when um, citing and referencing literature, that perhaps um, they t it, that tended to sway towards mm. male authors, um, very very much based in the, in the science discipline as well. So potentially broadening that out and mm -hmm. getting it to speak to a wider variety of disciplines uh, might be um, something to consider. Um, there were a, a couple of points where I think uh, external industry or professional contexts uh, are referenced via the use of uh, by the use of quotes and we were discussing potentially the might be useful to have some sort of individual activity where the the, the participants the person uh, looking at this particular course could answer a, a reflective question to consider how you know their own gender the gender that they identify with and how that interplays with the professional mm -hmm. context as well so there's a bit of bit of reflection there um what else did we have yeah, and then there were. I suppose we we also leaned into some of the more um, general inclusivity aspects as well. Um, so there was a, an interesting point uh, made around. I think there was a um, there was a use of a quote again where there was some color highlights. Um, and actually, we we were discussing that actually statistically, uh, men are more likely to um, have some kind of color blindness. So actually, mm -hmm. it's just considering that in, yeah. the, in the makeup of the in the design of of that particular resource as well. So yeah, just there just a few points to add in addition, really. Thank you very much. And improvements to the checklist itself? Um, I don't know if, if you both have any reflections on that. Feel free to. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think in, in, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In, in general, it's, it's, you know, uses the term, you know, male, female, men and women. So just acknowledging, yeah, that there's the, you know, if, you, if you're gender neutral or whatever. Um, yeah, so, so that's a very, it. very valid point. So to give you the context, that's for the, um, we work with the countries in which the legislation is very often against it. So we, the only thing we uh, we did, we talk everywhere, women students and men students, because that at least allows us to think also trans women, trans men. Uh, but we cannot really voice that working with our partners. And I think if you think about what Marianne Scott was talking today about, we just, okay, it's just one step, you know, you start somewhere. Uh, and then then you continue. So we have constraints in which we work, but that's a very good point. Uh, and I'm going to go over to this table. You got four minutes in total. Excellent, because we have two groups left, two minutes per group. Are you very, very good <laughs> on time? So um, for recommendations for the course, one thing that we just added here that I think kind of encompasses everything is just add more. So like more examples, just because there was we were finding very little examples showcasing like male and female characters i think mm -hmm. we saw one mention of a he when it was referring to researchers which can then tie the idea back to researchers are he. yeah um so seeing more examples of people um we wanted to see more like interactive activities and quizzes and stuff like that because it was all it was very reading intensive and seeing a big block of text can just be very difficult to engage with and thinking about quizzes which um, in your in your presentation, you know, these women engage a lot with quizzes and stuff. So that could be helpful. More videos and audio with men and women alike, just because we didn't see a lot of that unless it was externally linked. Yeah. Um, and the one video I think that we saw, you know, there was a video of a man and then the the uh, the woman's video, it was just a picture of her while she was talking. So notice that 
Um, things like images being added to the course as well to break up some of that text. Um, we noticed that the the image where it you know you you had the text and you could try to edit it. You hit the reveal button, and it showed the green and and highlighted stuff. Um, that was it was a descriptive image, so it didn't have alt text in it. Mm -hmm. But it also like didn't fit the screen. And being that we were all using our phones, that means, you know, if a woman is using her phone, she's not gonna be able to see it that well, yeah. just because of how it, it did. Um, so yeah, th I think those are some of the ones that we hit on that. Um, I think others hinted at as well. Thank you. <laughs> um, a few things. Uh for the checklist, but I think just to be brief, um, the key recommendation I think would be to see if there's a possibility of using a language um, tool. The, so where you'd be able to run some text through the tool mm -hmm. to generate um, a, a report that would tell you to what extent the language that you're using, the verbs that you're using, yeah. for example, are male or female. Um, we were talking about recruitment um, processes and, uh, having seen a similar tool or used yeah. a similar tool in action uh, when you're putting out an advert for a job. Uh, so, for example, you know, a learning developer might be doing a lot of supporting. Well, it turns out that supporting is heavily female yep. uh, in, in these assessments. So whether there was something like that that you could put your course text through. Thank you very much. And the last group. And can I ask a man to speak? I'm going to be annoying with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, plenty, plenty of the conversations that we've had been echoed elsewhere around the room. So I don't know if there's much new to add here, but um, from the perspective of the course, um, the yellow items, um, you could acknowledge where there are gender imbalances amongst the contributors. So it could actually acknowledge that on the page. Yeah. So it could um, be kind of re reflective in that way. Um, it could include a statement. We found it kind of hard to know where the course is positioned, like what's the community of learners that it's aimed at. Um, and I guess because it's quite self-directed and kind of independent learning, we kind of it sort of seemed like it was difficult to to know kind of where 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 the learners were kind of aimed for. Um, and um, I think the course could also we, we, a really helpful uh, topic that you brought up was this idea of intersectionality. So that um, so something like plagiarism, you wouldn't necessarily approach with a gender lens, and because of that, it's actually quite a complicated thing to unpack. So I think that's um, so that was interesting. Um, and then on the pink ones, the process. Um, we didn't ha necessarily have the subject matter expertise to apply. The framework actually so we found that a little bit challenging i think mm -hmm. um so i think maybe some pre some some pre-work or like an overview of the terms and the concepts would have been helpful yep. um yeah and i think that's that's the main thing thank you very much it's, it's been all really really insightful and uh if that's okay um, i would like to keep your feedbacks uh with me just to give you a background to the course so we developed that course quite some time ago there's a self-study and and now it's going through a review just because we realized as well that there is a you know we are revising everything for being also model app uh, compatible so at the moment uh, it's not so you have to go on a really browser because otherwise it's not on the model app yes mm. so less confident at the beginning and you've looked sorry <laughs> yeah. if women are less confident and you've immediately got like fraud and you know insidious and yeah. this kind of stuff that's not going to help yeah. with low confidence that was a definitely point raised, yeah. so I have some uh feedback on that that was done uh by the external reviewer from a gender expert from Kenya and uh, I'm going to just distribute it at one at the table so you're going to have to share I'm sorry I tried to be paper friendly but I wasn't anyway uh, so you can have a look what what she said about this particular module uh, if you are interested, and I'm going to quickly distribute it. I do want you. to encourage you to carry on the conversations over coffee. Because yes, we run out totally. Of time. Thank you so much. Also, on behalf of ALT, as a, as your chair for the session, I want to thank all the participants. You had lots to say, lots of interactions in your table. And thank you so I much. hope they continue, this experience continue for you throughout the conference. And thank you, Joanna, for the Thank you very workshop. much. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>